All right, we are live. Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Clutter. I'm Jess Marcy. I'm a clutter coach, and I am so excited to be joined today with Karen, our guest Karen, who has been a member of our communities for, I, I you know, I never know how long, but I know it's been a long time, Karen, because you've also been decluttering a box a day, and you're up over 500 now, right? Is that, or even more? We're almost at 875. We're at oh 870 gosh. something. <laughs> I'm way behind here. <laughs> so Karen, how are you doing? How did you get here on this podcast with me? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Um, <clears throat> tell me a little about myself. Tell you a little about myself. Uh, I grew up with my dad in the military, so we moved around a lot. So we didn't really have like things, you know, that we were able to keep because, you know, ask Juliana military pays for things and don't want to pay for things, especially when you go across the ocean and back. Yeah. Um, so we, I spent like six years in Germany, you know, three when I was little and three when I was a teenager. So there was not a lot that we got to keep, you know, back and forth. When I left my parents' house, I had eight boxes and two suitcases. That's it. Wow. So, you know, I don't know what happened between now and then, but now I have a house full and two sheds. So <laughs> something in those last time. like 30 something years <laughs> kind of went wrong, but. <laughs> well, I've heard from a lot of military uh, adults who grew up in military families. And also, we, you know, as you said, we have Juliana, we have a couple of military families in our groups now. That sense that you can't keep things and everything is temporary can really impact you as an adult, because you didn't have that ownership over your, your home wasn't yours, your stuff, you know, had to be constantly minimized for moving. So it makes total sense that as an adult, clutter would be something that you might struggle with. Yeah. Do you have siblings? Did they, is this like, are your siblings experiencing something like this? I don't know. Cause my sister is, um, like a perfectionist and from the pictures I see in her house, unless she's like me where you move everything out of the picture zone, her house is fairly empty and clean and, and precise. Yep. Yep. I but, like the picture zone. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you go to take a picture and it's like, wait a minute, stop, hold on. We got to move this, move that out of the way, move that out of the way. So we get a good picture. You know, this is actually an interesting way that clutter takes your time that I don't, I haven't thought about significantly, but every picture that you take, you have to make sure the background is okay because you feel that sense of, you know, you don't want other people to see your clutter, but it, it's, so it's just another way that clutter is stealing your time. Yep. Yep. For sure. But Karen, you're on the road to you're on the road to decluttering. You're on the you're on the decluttering path. You you are every day making an it's effort. It's so slow. <laughs> There's no magic wand. That's your next thing, Jess. You have to men you have to invent a magic wand that just goes poof, it's gone. I know. I know. It is really slow and I think one of the biggest misconceptions about clutter in the beginning when I work with clients is that it's going to happen really quickly. And there's, you know, I kind of like hesitate to say anything about a timeline because it's just not an overnight fix. Um, but you can make progress in, and you can start to see progress kind of quickly, but there's a, yeah, it's, that's a, just a cold, hard truth. It's painful. <laughs> it's decluttering. I is painful. I think television has us brainwashed, mm -hmm. you know, the hoarders or the, you know, the organizational shows that they have HGTV has us all brainwashed because we don't know how long it took them to film that show. You know, that 30 or, minute show, your whole house is done. It's like, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Or how many people they have a team of people that go in and help, which yeah. would make a big difference but I don't think would be as impactful in the long run. I think it'd be almost traumatic, you know, because it's like, what, do you, what is leaving my house? You know? Yeah. I have boxes. I've lived in my house for um, just over 20 years and I have boxes that I haven't touched in that long. And I told my husband, I, you know, we have junk week coming up where they take all the junk off your, off your um, curb. 
And I said, we need to go through the garage because there's stuff in there that can leave. So we made decisions and we got some stuff, but we were opening boxes that I haven't touched in 20 years. And it's like, <gasps> the little pig from when my kid was in first grade. And it's, you know, they had a whole production about a pig and, you know, whatever. And a little, little egg that was, you know, made into a little pig and stuff. So I took pictures of those, but you know, the mice had been there. So it was kind of painful, you know, it's like, Oh, and then I was like, well, I have a picture of my kid with the, with the little pig. So it, it helps it. It's a little easier to let go when you have a picture of them with it. So, but it was, it was like, Oh no, not these. <laughs> <laughs> not another box of memorabilia. <laughs> oh, and some stuff I was just like, I'm not ready to conquer this stuff yet. So we're just going to not, you know, we're, we're making progress with big things and the box full of papers are just going to have to wait. You know, I went through some of them, but you get brain fatigue, you know, decision fatigue. Absolutely. And, you know, when you're trying to just push, push, push and get the biggest impact done, then paper takes forever. So, yep. yep. So Karen, have you found this process to be more painful than not, or is it kind of even? Um, I think it kind of depends on what it is you're looking at. You know, um, old bills, not painful at all. <laughs> old school work for kids, a little more painful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. How has your family reacted to the decluttering that you've been doing? Um, the only one that's actively helping me is my middle one, my in my my in-home clutter coach. Come on, mom, we need to do another box. Come on, mom, we need to do another box. It's like, I don't feel like it. It's like, you said you wanted to do this. And it's like, oh gosh, <laughs> like stop saying stuff out loud. They hear you <laughs> throw it back at you. That external accountability is so huge though. I mean, what a blessing. Yeah. Um, you know, so he knows that I'm in CBA he doesn't know like the financial part of it, it, you know, whatever, but he knows it's my quote unquote box a day group. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And, you know, I'm in another group. Um, but I've, I've tried over 20 different people and strategies and, and boot camps and, and workshops and, you know, whatever, you know, let, let's see what this one has to say. Let's see what that one has to say before I found you. What do you think is different about the way that we approach clutter compared? Cause I actually have no idea really what a lot of these other programs do. I've heard about them through clients, but I don't have a solid sense. I, I guess mostly what I get is that they are a schedule to follow. And that's kind of like the, but I, I could be wrong. I don't know. So most of them will tell you, like some of them have said, okay, I need you to go to the junk drawer. And I was like, I don't want to go to the junk drawer. <laughs> it's like, what is a junk drawer going to do to make my, my kitchen look any better? Yeah. It's hidden. And the theory with that was that it's a small space. So you don't get overwhelmed mm -hmm. to learn the, the techniques on how to do things which I get, but I was like, no, I, I did my pantry and I had like eight bags of, of food that, you know, garbage bags that I couldn't even pick up mm -hmm. because I'm like, this needs to happen. So I did the pantry and I was disgusted and I was annoyed and I was frustrated because I threw out all that food. And I was like, how could this be like this? Because you have it full and you just shove the stuff in there and you don't really take care of it. So since then I've done the pantry like 12 times because <laughs> it never, it's never done. You know, it's done until well, you go shopping again. And then yeah, it's like, oh, food all the time. I mean, that's one of the, that's like one category that has to come into your house pretty regularly. Yep. Yep. For sure. But you know, it's like some of them have the, you know, this is the no mess method. You know, you take stuff out for 10 minutes, you deal with it and you, and then you put it back and then you take out enough, you know, hmm. or you take 10 items out of your closet and you take care of those. And then if, if something happens, then you don't have a whole bed full of stuff out of your closet. 
which I understand that method because you can't go to sleep until you get until you deal with it. But it's that's annoying. It's yeah, overwhelming. That, that seems like a very I don't know, seems a little slow paced. <laughs> and not that there's anything wrong with that, but I think there's no right strategy. And that's no. Kind of- and that's what I like about yours is that there's so many coaches that have so many different things that work with them. It's like, I've heard of the men's method before. And I was like, what is one item going to do to make space? It's like, <laughs> it's a piece of junk mail. That is, that is not accomplishing anything in my book. So it's like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> You know, but you love box a day, so you've been doing box a day. The now. box I was a day here. is great. I tell so, you, Marie is like, I don't know what happened, where she came from, but it's like when I saw that, I was like, a box a day. I can, I can do a box a day. And you know, do I see that anything has changed? No. Do I see that there's a box of space missing? No. But it's a box of stuff that left, you know, and my husband was talking about, he said, well, if we do whatever, then they're going to need to come in and, and, you know, there's too much stuff for us to make this change in, you know, the house because people are going to have to come in and there's too much stuff. And I told him, I said, I have stuff leaving the house every single day. You may not see it. But stuff leaves the house every single day, every single day. And I'm working as hard as I can, you know. And he goes, I see it. I know. And I'm like, so I'm just letting you know that we have a lot of stuff in here and it's not going to take overnight. But things leave every single day, every day. And, you know, he doesn't know I'm in CBA. He doesn't know that I'm that I have my groups that I go to and, and post things and whatever else. And he doesn't know that, but you know, my son's the only one that does, but he knows that some things are changing. Yeah. It just takes forever. And sometimes we (laughs) need to just do these things for ourselves and it's almost better to not have other people involved in our families because Everyone, you know, they're not listening to all the coaching. They're not understanding the bigger picture. And that's okay because it's not, it's, this is about our own personal journeys. So I think it makes a lot of sense sometimes to just stay the course on your own, keep moving forward, one foot in front of the other, and be with a group that understands how difficult this is. And that's, that's it right there is these people in the group, they understand They know, I mean, you can't go to work and say, oh my gosh, there's so much stuff in my house. You can't go to the neighbor and say, I can't, you know, I guess what? I created a foot of space in my house. And they'd be like, and your point is how bad is your house? You know, you can't do that. But here it's like, oh my gosh, there's floor space and get excited. (laughs) There's a bunch of other stuff, but there's some floor space. Yeah. You know, any floor space is a huge accomplishment. You know, or they can't say, hey, I cleared off my dresser. And they're like, big, wow, I do that every day. And it's like, okay, but, you know, they're, that's not supportive. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess I'm thinking like the box a day, it resonates with you because it's more than one or two items. It's like a, it's a, it's a visual, like a significant. It's, it's a measurable amount. amount. Yeah. 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 Yep. I, I love the box a day. So now you're 800 boxes in, <laughs> which is amazing. And Karen, do you consistently fill a box every single day or do you kind of do it in like spurts? I do it in spurts. Um, right now I have probably 10 boxes ahead because we were in the garage. So I took pictures of things in the garage, you know, because, you know, so we're, we're ahead that way because there's days that, you know, when I go up to camp for the weekend or whatever, I just spent five days up at camp or five or six days. So I was still posting my box a day, but I wasn't here at home and I wasn't filling any box a days. I decluttered about 200 dead bugs in the windowsills. <laughs> <laughs> they don't fill up a box. But <laughs> 
But uh, um, so what's your strategy for once you fill up the box? Like then what, what kind of happens after that? So I fill up the box, I take a picture of it and then I, you know, if it's donatable, I'll put it in a box to go to the thrift store. If it's recyclable, I put it in the recycle bin. And if it's garbage, I throw it out. But and how often do you go to the thrift store? Would you say? Um, probably about once a month. Yeah. The last couple of appointments that we've had, we've canceled because I didn't have anything because the boxes were like papers mm -hmm. and things. So I had like one or two little tiny items that didn't even fill up a box. And it's like, eh, it's the marathon weekend. I'm not going to take my time to go to the, the thrift store when I can do, you know, when I can work harder and not be out running errands. So besides recycling and throwing stuff in the trash, do you find the thrift store is the easiest option for just getting rid of like, you know, the housewares and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. There's, yeah. I have one bin in my house of things that I have listed for sale. Um, you know, and it, one of the groups that I belong to talks about the container concept is if it fits in that bin, it's allowed to be, you know, for sale. If it doesn't fit in the bin, something has to go to make room. Yep. So that's kind of where that is. And, um, you know, I figured that bin's already there anyway, so if I want to list it for sale, then it can go in the bin and it can just hang out there till somebody's interested in it. Then it yeah, doesn't take any more thought process. Yep. It's to it's just a collection of items in your house. And that makes yep. total sense to give it like a defined amount of space. Do you like the selling process? Do you find it's easy or do you find that there is I, like, what are your thoughts on selling stuff? Are you using marketplace? I'm using marketplace. I have one thing listed on eBay, but, um, it's not going anywhere and it says it's it expired, but it won't let me relist it. And I don't know what the deal is because I never sell in there. So I don't know how to do that, but my husband did not want to donate it because it's a, um, new inbox, never out of the mailing package Barbie from when my kids were born. Mm -hmm. So he's like, I want to get some money for it. Okay, fine. So I was like, we'll see what happens. Nothing happens. <laughs> I might put it on um, Marketplace just to see. But how, So um, I'm curious, how much would one of those things be worth if somebody, I guess it's only worth what somebody's going to pay for it. But like, is right. there, what, like, what's the perceived value of something like that, would you say? Well, from eBay, it goes anywhere from like $595 to $800. So... Because I just saw one today listed for $800. And I was like, yeah, I don't think you're going to get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what would make a Barbie worth $800? I guess rarity? <laughs> I don't know. But there's a million of them on eBay. So if it was me wanting to buy one, I'd find the le least expensive one possible. Yep. Yep. I like that. Yeah. You're thinking like, a like you know, like the person who's buying, which... I think makes it more realistic when it comes to pricing. Yeah. I hate to shop. I hate spending money. I hate it with a passion. I told my husband when we got together, I said, I would rather stick pens in my eyes than go shopping. <laughs> I hate it. I said, you are so lucky. I hate to shop because it saves us so much money. And he's one that will find stuff on sale and we go, but it was on sale. It's like, right. but we don't make tarts. And he goes, yeah, but we can make them and give them to somebody. And then they can keep the pan. I'm like, when are we going to make a tart to give to somebody? So don't tell him I said this, but they went to the thrift store. <laughs> I hid them under boxes of stuff when they went to the thrift store. So don't tell him. <laughs> He's not on Facebook, is he? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, I it, I mean, it is a complicated thing with other people who are bringing things in and everyone has a, a, their own value they place on the items in the house. And that is a negotiating that is really complicated, I think. Yeah. But um, I remember for my birthday one year, he said, I want you to go shopping for pants. And that is the worst thing in the world. Pants are awful because I have a weird shape. But um, he says, and I want you to go into the stores and talk to the people. 
And so I went into every single store in the mall before the mall was dead. And then I went downtown and I talked to the people and I said, you know, I said, we're girls. We have curves. Why do they make square pants? We're not SpongeBob. And he called me and I was in tears and he goes, what's the matter? And he goes, are you OK? I'm like, no, I'm not OK. I was like, you, you made me go shopping. I said, this is the worst thing you could have ever done in your entire life. Don't ever make me go shopping again, ever, ever. And he's like, oh, my God, I'm in so much trouble. <laughs> yeah, I've, so I don't I, I'm a rarity either. <laughs> Or pants, for that matter. I like my leggings. <laughs> well, now I wear scrubs, so putting on jeans is awful now. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> so does that make it easier to declutter jeans? Um, I still have them because on my days off, I, you know, I don't want to wear scrubs. Yep, yep. You know, but. Yeah. Yeah, it's tricky. I don't so need to buy as many for sure. <laughs> um, so what have you found to be like the most helpful thing that you've latched on? So the box a day has obviously been really helpful, but like so say somebody is stuck in this process or just getting started. Where, what's your best advice for them? My best advice for them is to walk through your house and see what just makes you go crazy. You know, if you walk through your kitchen and you're like, I can't even set a plate down or you walk into the bedroom and go, I can't walk. I can't make the bed because I can't walk next to the bed. Or if, you know, you're trying to brush your teeth in the bathroom and everything's falling all over every time you touch something, what, whatever makes you crazy, start there. Because, you know, if you wait till the end to start at the, you know, to leave it till the end, it's just going to drive you crazy every day. So, but if you, if you fix the kitchen counter, if you clean up next to your bed or the bathroom sink or wherever, if there's no couches to sit on, you know, start wherever it makes you crazy. At least there's a sense of accomplishment where you're like, okay, I did this. Okay. You know, there's. And you're happier. It's making. It's and you're making happier you because, easier. and then, and then once that's done then find out what else, what's the next <laughs> thing that makes you crazy. Yep. Those hot zones, whatever. Yeah. Whatever is impacting your life the most tackle that first. That's really, really good advice. And because how about if you get stuck? What, what do you do if you get stuck? Well, this challenge, I tell you what makes me want to say, I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me say that every day. I don't want to. Um, but I do. If you get stuck, I like your touch and tackle thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just pick something up. Look at something, you know, where do, what do you see in front of you? Do something with it. It does it belong there. Does it not belong there? Does it belong in the garbage? It's all going to end up there anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is the truth. It all ends up in a landfill one day, unfortunately, but that's just how it goes. <laughs> Um, so, okay. This has been fantastic. I love all of your insight into how to get started, where to get started, what to do when you get stuck and the challenges of really having a lot of stuff in your house that you have to go through because it, oh, I'm getting a phone call from a spammer. <laughs> I need to declutter those from my life. <laughs> um, but really, you know, like how difficult it is when you have a lot of stuff in your house and it does not change overnight. How do you keep moving forward? How do you find that motivation? Um, I think it has to do with why isn't it done yet? You know, I can't wait to be able to have things finished, you know, and have the kids and their significant others over and you can't, you know, and Those every awesome goals. I, that's, yeah, that's every marathon, that. my goal is finish the living room. Well, it sometimes <laughs> works. It sometimes doesn't. But <laughs> <laughs> because you finish the living room and that's where I go to sort my stuff. So I bring yeah. stuff into the living room because I can sit down. I can have a TV show on or whatever and not not pay attention to that, but have it on for background noise. 
And, you know, I have this sort of system. <laughs> well, the fact that you've cleared enough space to actually sort is a huge thing. I think that's another actually big stopping point in the beginning is if you have, if you don't have the space to sort, it really is complicated to figure out how to even get started. So having yeah. that living room cleared and being able to re-clear it, <laughs> ish, clear ish, <laughs> but that does make a big difference. And that's a huge accomplishment. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, I remember when I had my room of doom. Do you remember that? Yes. Yes. And my son was moving home. Actually, he was coming home for Christmas and then he was going to move home and there was no bed and you could barely walk next to the bed. I mean, the bed was in there, but it was, it was packed full and you're like, so what's on the bed? And I'm like, God, everything, everything's <laughs> on the bed. And it's like, well, how much can go? I'm like, I don't know. Cause I don't know what's there. <laughs> And you're like, okay, can 50% go? And I was like, I don't know, because I don't know what's there. <laughs> but I was, so I was much, almost mad at energy? you, though, because I was like, you're, you're going to have me move, get 50% of this stuff gone. It's like, these are my craft supplies. This is my stuff. It's like, it's like and now you're saying 50 to 75% gone. It's like, I don't know that I can do that. But I did. <laughs> You did. I, yeah, I know. I, you, and this is like, I think there's a lot of like reckoning that comes in the beginning of this process. Most homes need to get rid of like 50% of their stuff just to live within the space that they have. Right. That's just across the board everywhere. I mean, but nobody likes to think about it that way. <laughs> so. And, and it's also like, um, I was like, well, who, who does she think she is telling me that I have to get rid of half of this stuff? I was like, I don't know that I'm okay with this. It's like, wait a minute. No. <laughs> and then I started looking at it and it's like, well, these aren't really prized possessions. This is kind of stuff that I really sort of didn't need and I don't have a use for it. So, okay, this can go and half of that can go. It's I'll give half of that away. Okay, well, that's the 50% of this pile. And <laughs> yeah. So and once you, you stop, once easier. you stop thinking that you're being told what to do and you start looking at what you have, then it becomes a little easier because it's Absolutely. not as important as you thought it was. And because you're making the decisions yourself, really. Yeah. Like, and I think as a professional organizer, I have never told people what to get rid of. But I've given like general guidelines, like you probably need to get rid of 50%, right? But I think it's really important that professional organizers and clutter coaches don't tell somebody that they have to get rid of something because you yeah. just don't know what is important to somebody else. You have no right. idea like how their life unfolds and how their day looks and how their history, what their history is. And nobody can make decisions about mm -hmm. your stuff, but you. Yeah, that's, that's very, very true. I mean, because scraps of paper may not mean anything, you know, to somebody, but to somebody else, it's like, well, I can't afford paper, but I use, you know, these little scraps to make flowers for my cards that I use, you know, yeah. rather than using a whole sheet because yeah. they have a budget and they make cards a lot. So this little bitty one inch piece of paper doesn't mean anything to some people, but yeah, Apple you know. is a really good example. Absolutely. And if they enjoy making cards for people, then don't take away their joy <laughs> and make well, them and spend more money and go yeah. shopping and yeah. bring more in. <laughs> no, we want to have, a, we really do want this ultimately to result in a joyful experience, right? That's the point of having a home. So you can relax, you can engage in activities that you find are, you know, joyful or whatever, it, but it's, it, that's, that's the goal. So I agree. Don't ever take somebody's joy away, build it into this process. And Karen, I know you craft a lot too, which is, I, I do. love seeing your crafts and I know how happy that makes you. <laughs> I do. And my son is a crafter. And so, you know, we're looking at things and he's been using a lot of my yarn 
to sell stuff. And it's like, go ahead. It's like, you can have anything in this room except what's in this, this, or this. Everything else you can do whatever you want with. I don't care. Nice. So, you know, he's been making a bunch of stuff and, and it's been really, it's been really good. You know, some of the, some of the yarn has gone to the thrift store. <laughs> it's like, are you ever going to use this? No. Am I, are you ever going to use this? No. It's like, okay, then it's going. That's great though, that to make that decision together, you know? Yeah. Well, just because I don't want it doesn't mean that he doesn't want it or yeah. vice versa. You know, it's not yeah. his to make that decision with, but if I don't want it and he's not going to use it, then it doesn't need to be there. Yep. Out it goes. Out it goes. Um, so we're just at a half an hour, which is when I try to like wrap things up. <laughs> um, but Karen, do you have any last words for anybody who's watching now or later? So community, we talked a little bit about that, but it's so, so true. So true. You need that involvement. When my year in CBA was up, I, I made a decision. I was like, well, I can, I think I can do it, you know, with just, with, with just, you know, prioritize your sanity. But I was like, but would I, you know, would it be as impactful? Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I have a lot of the um, videos, you know, they're in the library. Do I ever go back and watch replays? Not as often as I should, but I have enough in there to last me a long time, a but lifetime. it's not the same if you don't have the interaction, you know, yeah. when you're on the, the zoom calls, you can respond to people, you can ask questions, you can, you know, it's like, well, what do you think? It's like, what is this thing? And what does it go to? And should I throw it away? Cause maybe it, I don't have that thing anymore, but it's like, Oh, it's that thing. It goes to there. I've been wondering where that piece went. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's so e much easier to just ask questions, you know, or answer people's questions when they have questions. It's like, and when people are going through things and they're like, I'm sorry, I'm getting upset. It's like, no, 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 you're getting it out. You're decluttering those emotions and that's fine. It's, <laughs> You know, to be able to bounce things off with people is so much different than just watching a video. I agree. The The community makes a world of difference. You build relationships with people and then you really do feel that accountability because they're your friends. Right. And it, it just changes everything. For So, so true. So true. And Karen, on that note, thank you for being a good friend to other people in our programs. You post, you're encouraging. It's really awesome. And our communities only exist because of people like you. So really a, a, a heartfelt thank you from me. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for being, thank you for creating these <laughs> communities. <laughs> It's been such a fun thing for me to watch it all unfold. I never would have expected that this, you know, this would have kind of turned into what it is today, but I'm so just really grateful about how it all has happened. On that note, we are going to end our podcast for today. If you watch on replay, make sure you tag me or Karen so that we can see your comments and Karen, Thank you so much for going out on a ledge here and agreeing to be a podcast guest. <laughs> Your words make a huge difference. And just thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I've been thinking about doing it for a while. And today just happened to work because the boss is away. She was supposed to be back today, but she hasn't come in yet. So usually I'm working during these, so I can't really. But it worked out. So yay, I'm so glad it worked out. And now I, mean, I can say I did it. <laughs> you did it. You did it. Um, and have a wonderful weekend. And if you're marathoning tomorrow with us, enjoy the marathon. Clear that that living room again. <laughs> definitely, definitely marathoning tomorrow. Tomorrow we may be in one of the sheds. However, I found out that somebody lives there. There's a squirrel that lives in our shed. <laughs> so, so I don't know if he has friends or not, but I think we're going to try part of the shed until we get kicked out. So. <laughs> We'll, well see luck with that. <laughs> that that might be a whole different show later. <laughs> it's, it's 
squirrel Absolutely. invasion. <laughs> well, stay safe with the squirrel. <laughs> yep. Have a good weekend and I will see you in, you know, in a couple of days inside our group. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.